why do you think it is that, um, or even though sulfur is so important um, in biology, that it's just not talked about, um, particularly in in terms of of food? You know, we don't we don't um, measure how much sulfur is in food or anything like that. Uh, how has sulfur slipped through the cracks? I wish I understood that because to me, it became very clear. Actually, when I first started researching autism and I was also researching heart disease at the same time mm -hmm. and I identified sulfate in particular as being an important um, issue, insufficient sulfate as being an important issue in both heart disease and autism before I even met glyphosate. I already figured that out. And I was really surprised at the lack of interest, a lack of interest in heparin sulfate, lack of interest in cholesterol sulfate vitamin D sulfate, you know, all these, and there's all these sulfated molecules that are, um, all these biologically active molecules that are sulfated in transit. And they understand that sulfation temporarily disables its ability to do its biological thing. So it sort of turns it off and they figure, well, that's why it's sulfated so that when it's traveling in the blood, it doesn't want to be active until it arrives. It drops off the sulfate and then it becomes active. Vitamin D is like that. And cholesterol sulfate is like that too. So they, but if you think about it, those molecules are transporting sulfate all over the body. And you need a molecule to transport sulfate because otherwise sulfate will gel the blood. You don't want gelled blood. You know, you need the gel lining the vessel, but you don't want it in the part that's gonna flow. Very tricky system to figure out. And so the cholesterol and the sulfate both help each other out. Cholesterol is not water soluble by itself. If you stick a sulfate onto it, then it becomes water sulfate soluble and it can just be shipped right out into the blood without having to be packaged up inside an LDL particle. So, you know, we have all these people taking statin drugs because they have high serum LDL. And the reason I think why they have high serum LDL is because they don't have enough sulfate. And in fact, cholesterol sulfate goes into membrane. So it gets out into the, it can go freely into the blood and then it can, it'll pop into the membrane, the, the, the uh, lipid part, you know, that's uh, not water soluble, goes naturally into membranes and the sulfate's sticking out and the sulfate's making gel around the lipid particle. So what's happening is that LDL particle is becoming very protected by the cholesterol sulfate that goes into its membrane. It makes gel around that particle and that gel is called exclusion zone water for a reason, because it excludes things. It becomes like pure crystalline water around the LDL particle that keeps it safe from getting from reacting with things that are in the blood that are dangerous, like glucose, for example, you know, and oxidizing agents. Those things have less access to the to the contents, the fatty contents inside the LDL particle if the particle has enough cholesterol sulfate in its membrane. So again, if you have deficiency of cholesterol sulfate, those LDL particles become susceptible to damage. When they get oxidized, when they get glycated, they become problematic and you get heart disease. And then you're gonna be stuck with a statin drug because that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna say, oh, you have a high LDL, take a statin drug. Rather than recognizing your real problem is you don't have enough sulfate. Yeah, so I mean, you, you wrote a, a beautiful paper about Enos um, mm -hmm. and its, its role in um, sulf uh, sulfate, um, creating sulfate. Um, can you talk a little bit about glyphosate and enos? Oh, gosh, yeah. Enos, I think, is one of those molecules that's very, very sensitive to glyphosate toxicity. Yeah. In fact, it's been shown experimentally that glyphosate disrupts a class of enzymes called cytochrome P450 enzymes. And, and enos is called an orphan member of that class because it's not quite it's not quite exactly the same, but it has a lot of the same features. And I suspect that it disrupts ENOS in the same way as it disrupts the other side enzymes. ENOS also depends upon terminal glycines in order to hook to the membrane. It has a highly conserved glycine at the end that allows it to hook to the membrane. And it needs to hook to the membrane in order to make the sulfate, in my opinion. And so it can't hook because the glyphosate is substituting for the glycine. That's going to cause it to not be able to do its job properly. It even also has two glycines that are, um, are necessary to hook, to make a dimer, to make an Enos dimer. Absolutely. So these highly conserved glycine residues in Enos, I suspect are getting disrupted by glyphosate and it's interfering with its ability to make the sulfate that is then goes into the heparin sulfate in the membranes of all the cells. And of course the blood vessels as well.